OMC day. I hope everybody is having a phenomenal day so far. Sorry that we were a little bit late here. We did receive some very interesting news on the live stream that Gabe and I were doing. Unfortunately, Streamlabs decided to just boot me out again. So I couldn't be there for that portion of the interview. Um, but it seems that we've made another millionaire with 1348. I'm going to link up with, uh, with Dutch eyes and we're going to do another interview, verify everything. And we'll, we'll put that out for you guys soon too. Um, so again, guys, as you guys are filtering in here, make sure you guys hit that like button on the stream. And again, that's going to be two millionaire interviews so far this year. Um, we had Jason. Now we have Dutch as I told you guys that we are changing the game. The power of this system is absolutely crazy. Um, let me actually pin a little link here for you guys. It is also the last chance for you guys to get 50% off, uh, your lifetime membership. Uh, hold on. Let me do this. Uh, 50. Hold on. Let's see. So here's that link right there, guys. If you want to come back in there with us, I mean, you guys were seeing it over on Gabe's channel, um, where we were live for a little bit before I got rudely booted by Streamlabs. Um, but yeah, team, we're going to be doing another one of those millionaire interviews. Um, the power of the system, it just speaks for itself at this point. Um, for those of you guys that don't want to come in at the lifetime tier right now, perfectly fine. Everybody gets access to a two week free trial. Um, and again, the, the price of the actual monthly payment is, is $30, about $30 lower than it was two months ago. Uh, it's not going to stay that way forever. So again, we're making millionaires over here. I'm probably about to be the only person with two millionaire member interviews on their channel. So get ready for that team. That video is going to be coming out soon too. We're going to be having a lot of fun with that. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, I, I, I'm super proud of you guys. Uh, shout out to all of you guys who have been with us for a while. A lot of the people that, that have uh, that have reached out to us and have been making a bunch of money with us and, and have actually became millionaires. Uh, they've been with us since the very beginning. You guys saw kind of the kind of the arc of what we've been on. There were a lot of people trying to tell us uh, to basically go fuck ourselves. And now we get to return the favor with a giant big fuck you middle finger. We're making millionaires over here. We're changing people's lives. If you're going to sit on the sidelines, nothing's ever going to change for you. You have to take action and get in before it is too late and you will be left behind. So team, Let's get after it, man. We'll verify that. We'll get that interview out for you guys a little bit later. But for the meantime, we're going to be watching Powell. I was scalping Spy a little bit today, up a little bit on the account. Uh, nothing too crazy. I wasn't trying to do anything nuts today. It's Powell Day. The, the premiums are whacked. I hate them. Like everything about how these premiums are moving today, I hate. Um, so, I mean, I'll probably not trade a whole lot of Powell. If I do something, it'll be super tiny. Uh, but let's see here, man. That guy had an active uh, in every way. Can't beat 1348. No. Uh, what's the different benefits from lifetime today versus payment lifetime other than pricing? Um, so for the master classes, you, uh, if you do the payment plan, you don't get them live. And I believe you don't get beta access, um, to the new stuff that we come out, but I'd have to confirm that Andy has sent that out and you guys will all see it. Um, before but again today's the last day for 50 percent off lifetime with code og lifetime if you guys are existing members and you want to transfer over just reach out to diana um and she'll help you do that man but let's get after it with pal dude i fucking dude i have some shit to say here here's the thing why like the thing with this is man i mean the amount of bullshit that Gabe and I have had to go through over the last year with people trying to steal 150 grand from us with people trying to basically do what we do and undercut and try to do all this nonsense without any strategy behind it. I'd like to take this moment to say a nice, big, massive fuck you. We are over here changing people's lives in a way that nobody has ever been able to before. I feel very proud of that. And that's been our goal the entire time. We knew that this was going to come eventually and people were going to have their lives changed. This is why I said, I'm not going to law school for three years because I have more important things to do. When I'm not going to class, like in the spring and summer or the spring of last year, and I said, no, I want to do this. It's because of these moments right here that I wanted to be able to do this with you guys and be a part of this journey with everybody. So again, there's been a lot of nonsense, but it, when we see you guys win, it's the best thing ever, man. Making millionaires, it's crazy. Did I ever think two years ago that I'd be on this stream with you guys saying, oh my God, we're going to be making millionaires? Uh, no, I didn't. Did I think it was possible? Yeah, I did. But this is crazy, man. This is crazy. This is nuts, man. So congratulations to all of you guys who have been with us for a while. Shout out to the new members, but this is going to be great.
Love you guys, man. Keep hitting that like button on the way in, dude. Let's get after it. By the way, not all of us Canadians are going to try to steal 150K from you. That's fine, bro. That's fine. Oh, my God. We got a lot of slackers. Uh, <laughs> shut up, D, sir. I woke up and chose violence. I'm coming for everybody, bro. Like, that's the thing. You can't, like, there's nothing that anybody can do at this point. It's not enough that we win. Everybody else is going to lose. If you're not with us, you're against us. And you can see it right here, the power of the things that we're giving you guys. So again, team, two weeks for free. You want to get lifetime, 50% off. You guys know where to go. Today's the last day. But let's see what Papa Powell has to say. Let's get after it, dude. I actually have to hold on. I have to send this link to Gabe for when he wants to pop on. Let's see. Give me two seconds. Uh... <laughs> you guys are definitely life changers. Thank you, Tabasco Dave. I appreciate that, man. Dude, it, it's crazy, man. Like seeing your guys' gains. Like I say it all the time. It's like, it's, it's one of the craziest things ever. Seeing you guys like just, it's fucking dope, man. I can't wait to make this other interview for you guys and, and get that out to you guys soon. Um, what's today? Wednesday? Yeah, I'll shoot him a message. Um, and then we'll see when we can get that interview going. I'll try to get it out as soon as possible. Um, maybe we'll have to do it this weekend. Update your Weeble. It has a candle timer now. I actually, honestly, I don't, I don't like, it's going to take up too much space on my computer. I like the way my screens look. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But let's see what we get on Spy here, team. Keep running up the likes on this stream. Hold on. I'm actually going to tweet out that we're live over here. Hold on. Jerome Powell live. I got to grab this link right here. Cup and handle. I don't really care much for cup and handles. And the other thing is, too, I'm very, like, kind of, I don't really care a whole lot about the price action today or not so much the price action like i do but it's more so like the premium pricing on it like the way that premiums are priced i hate them how you go from 50 to no 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 he didn't he did guys he didn't go from 50 to 1.2 million in a week he was talking about his gains so he made 90 grand one day lost 50 the next day but he's been on a two-year journey you guys didn't hear you guys didn't hear him correctly um it, he 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 was just talking about like how his trade performance has been recently like he made 90 grand in one day then he then he lost 50 in one day it's like but again what we're gonna get the interview i have i already know how we're gonna do it it's gonna be fun but yeah i mean we're uh, another millionaire interview over here team i uh, my goal for this year here's what my one of my goals is for this year and i'm really fucking good at exceeding goals just saying i'm gonna be a little cocky dickhead today because we can I want 10 millionaire interviews on my channel. I want 10. That's this is going to be two. He said over two years. Exactly. That's this is going to be two. We got eight more. My goal is 10 of you guys becoming millionaires in 2023. I want 10. Uh, the price, the spy options are not normally priced. They're like at least 50 to 60% inflated. Like the contracts that I usually buy are between, they're usually like a dollar, let's say 40 and a dollar 80. They're recently, they've been like 250 to three. I will become one, watch me. That's the fucking attitude that I like. Will you settle for one interview with someone who made 10 million on 1348? Uh, I already know that exists. I already, I already know that that has already existed. There's been people that have made that much or close, or that's their goal for this year because they're already millionaires. You guys just don't get it. Don't get left behind. We're changing lives over here. You want to be a part of it? Awesome. But I can lead you to the water. I can't make you drink. Gabe doesn't count. No, no, no. Gabe, Gabe's, been, Gabe's been rich, bro. And that's why, and that's why too, when people will come to me and be like, well, I don't want you doing this. I don't give a fuck. With, like, I don't care. Gabe's, Gabe is probably the, like, he's the best trader that I've ever seen. I've seen a lot of them. He knows exactly what he's talking about. And then it's my job to come and relay that information to you guys too, along with him. So congratulations team. We get to sit back a little bit and watch a little bit of Powell later. This is going to be fun. Wait, did I send that tweet out or no? Yeah, I did. All right, team. 
Also, you guys are big slacking on the like button over here. You guys are slacking like hard. We just made we just made somebody another millionaire. I want I want to see these likes go fucking nuts, dude. 85, that's weak. Slackers, Mikey will be the next millionaire. Traffic lights save lives, they do. Let's see, we're we're 10 away from 100 now. I want to see this jump to at least a 50% like ratio, you slackers. I know there's people in the back over here. I'm pumped. We made another millionaire. Everybody else can go fuck themselves, bro. End of the year for me, and I think there's going to be 10 before then. Dude, I can't wait. You screwed up our cadence by being late. I, yeah, we were doing the millionaire thing, bro. Oh, here we go. We finally got the bloop. Whoa. No, buddy. Oh, wow. Feeling Another really millionaire interview, dude. We're going to have two. I, I just told them, I'm like, my goal is 10 for this year. I want 10 of those interviews with you, with all the Trade 1348 gang becoming millionaires. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm shooting for, too, man. Wow. Well, we're doing what we sought to do, man. Mm -hmm. I did a little rant. It was fun. Maybe maybe Tabasco Dave, Dave can clip it because it was a full screen rant. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, man. Just wild. This is wild. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. I love to see people win. It's it's a drug for me, man. It really is. Me too. I I, I like I, that's kind of what we were talking about, too. When we first kind of came and, and we're 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 starting this up. It was like, this is going to change people's lives. Like yeah. we knew that this day would come. We just didn't know when. like these days, like, again, I think they're going to start coming quicker too. Yeah. Yeah. Whew. Doop, doop, doop. We got 12 minutes until Powell. Hold on. Let me, uh, let me find the link to it. Let me see. Nobody cares about AMC. Let's Jeez. See. Nobody cares. Why would why would you care about AMC when when we're over here making uh people millionaires? Yeah. What like why why would that be something that we're talking about here after we already said that ape was theft? Uh is say the last day for membership. Today's the last day to get 50% off of of lifetime, but you guys still get access to your two-week free trial. Uh, so let me throw that link back in here for you guys. But yeah, today's the last day for 50% off lifetime. Uh. <laughs> what? Look, What'd you do? Look, look at your text. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hopefully that doesn't go too terribly. <laughs> karma, bitch. Karma. <laughs> Gotta love it. Mm hmm. Oh, Dude, man. I hope you guys are ready for some Powell, buddy. This is going to be fun. This is going to be a fun time. We got 10 minutes. Oh, man. Uh, dum, 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 dum. We need a 1348 Traders Retreat. Ah, we, we've got some interesting things cooking for you guys. Don't worry. Not only not only trading related, but like some fun stuff that we could get going. Uh, Gabe, did you did you have a chance to play anything today, or you just kind of sat it out? <laughs> wait till oh wait, Friday. yeah, fuck you. All right, I already know. We already talked about this sort of. <laughs> 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 man i have to step it up now i know uh in gaetano you already have alerts on uh on platform damn i might have to change the challenge of turn 50k into a milli i can't i can't be done up here i uh, dude i know you've already taken 10 are you at 50 uh you can play hot or cold all you want <laughs> you fucker <laughs> oh my god <laughs> let's see all right guys spies just kind of chopping around here i do have the powell stream up so we will get that when he goes live uh actually wait he comes on at 2 30 why do i even have this on? yeah so that's at 2 30 so we're gonna get the release at two things are gonna go all fucking over the place 
Uh, let's see. You want to see how many veter? Uh, how many? Home. Well, Jeremy, that, that that was a brain twister there. That was a brain twister. Oh uh, yeah. All right, guys, keep smacking that like button on the way in, and remember. Last day for 50% off and secure your two-week free trial. We're going to have our second millionaire interview of the year coming for you guys soon. I'm going to link up with him. Just make sure we can verify stuff. I'll show you guys on the on the on on that video and that interview, and uh, we'll get that out for you guys as soon as I can. That'll be fun. That's two. Two. There are other people who have made millions, but they were already like, they already had it. So it's like, I can't, like we could say they made a million, but like, it's like, oh, well, I like the, I like the, the, what do you call it? Like the Cinderella story almost like the underdog. Yeah. The Cinderella story, I mean like the boxing story, not like the, yeah. The foot thing. The underdogs. I love those guys. Yeah. How many like military veterans are in 1340? I think there's a bunch of them. Yeah. Yeah, we well, you saw the screen I shared with you, right? Which one? Uh, the one before, um, Mr. Catman. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The, the, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I saw that one. That was a good one. Yeah. Uh, How many gains uh, is that? What's that like? Okay, so that's like three grand, 4,500, 65, or six. Dude, that's like eight. Gr Jesus, guys, you guys are killing it. Yes. Yes. Wow. All right. Uh, for those who uh, have served or in active duty, um, like, yeah, thank you for your service. And mm -hmm. uh, just keep kicking ass. You, oh, wait. you were made for this. You were made for this. Uh, Let's see. Uh, let's see. You're Daru in the Discord. Just signed up for 1348 for life. Original 69 OG. Just watch the new millionaire uh phone in with Gabe. Awesome. Yeah, man. Those are those are really solid. I, I, dude, it like almost it's not like they ruin the day. They don't ruin the day. But like I they actually make the day way better. It's just I get like so, so emotional that you guys are making millions, dude. Like it's crazy. It's like yeah, it just makes me want to take a step back and just be like, we've we've come so far, and you guys are coming along with us, which is amazing. <laughs> that that's exactly what it is, STV. That's exactly what it is. Like, mm -hmm. you know, moments like this is like you know moments after sex where you're stuck on stupid. Yeah, it's almost like post not clarity, but like you're just you just want to like take a step back and and just like admire your masterpiece that you've just created. Yeah. It's it's pretty it's dope. A very weird way to say that. <laughs> I tried to say something funny and it just came out weird. <laughs> yeah. Emily's got a masterpiece to show you. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> Cause this is the stream where people could be watching. I mean what about Lisa though? Which one's that one? <laughs> I'm so oh, yeah. under the bus. There's a few of them. <laughs> <laughs> let's see sv you can cry on my shoulder i might grope you during it but let it out okay thanks for saying that moto uh because i'm not gonna be doing that actually we're gonna leave that one to you pal we got five minutes until powell here we go here we go Oh, what about oh Roxanne? No, Roxanne sounds like a dude. That sounds like a forty-five-year-old. Yeah, who names their daughter Roxanne anymore? I don't know, dude. We used to play a drinking game with that song. With what song? Roxanne. Oh wow, that was a fun one. <clears throat> I'm waiting for Paula to save us. Yeah, right. Uh. To save who? The market's way high right now. You don't need any saving. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Dude, this is going to be fun. We got, what, four minutes to go? Guys, you're slacking so hard on the like button today. What is wrong with you? 
You're at 150. That's like not even 50%. If you, okay, it is a Powell day. So this is probably one of the only days that you guys have a really, really solid chance at hitting ankles. If you do 500, you get ankles. If you hit 1,000, which I don't think you will, we'll do the Batman thing. We'll do the what? The Batman thing. The underwear outside of my pants because I used to do that as a child. I'm here for it. I'm sacrificing my own dignity for the for the stream, for content. I am so here for it. Anyone got bots? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's – I will see that. <laughs> Uh, I okay. Oh, also, this is what we need to cover before. So right now, the market's expecting a twenty-five basis point rate hike. That's what we're expecting. Now, if they do anything higher, the market's gonna fucking die. Just telling you right now, twenty-five is the expectation. But here's what we need to pay attention to in Powell's statements later. It's are we gonna be doing further rate hikes? A lot of people think this is gonna be the last one, but this one, if we do twenty-five, doesn't get us over five percent terminal which is what everybody expects. So they could do a 50 now, hold it at five, and then that's it. Or they're going to do 225s. So that's really what we have to look out for going. And then you could get some insight into like if the SCP has changed or things like that. Mm. <clears throat> Question. Yes. Will they be Batman underoos like with like the Batman insignia? On, no, uh, like I don't a, have like, those. Like your bottom? I don't have those. You disappoint me. I, dude, I was doing this when I was like three. <laughs> That's why my parents had to have me tested. Because mm. I was doing that and I couldn't speak because I was stuttering so hard. They're like, what is this kid doing? He's running around. He can't speak. He's wearing his underwear outside of his pants. Something must be different. Yeah. Oh, my name is on right now. Text me your address. Miss. <laughs> Oh my god. All right, let's see. Mm. Let me see. Uh there you go. Briefs are boxers. You're here. here. They're never gonna get it. Do not underestimate the power of our people. It's a thousand likes. Oh, 30 seconds. Here we go. Dude, I found the cutest ones. It's like <laughs> you get them all. You get you get the Batman, the Superman, you get the Flash. Like you get them all, bro. All right. Here comes the volatility. Seven seconds. Six, five, four, three. What's the rate decision going to be? Let's see. Oh, she goes. Is it 50? Nah. Did they give us a 50? Come on. Please tell me they gave us a 50. Oh, it's a 25. What the fuck is this? Uh, this is a 25. Damn, I wanted to see the pivot boys just get max pain. Yeah, but they're getting slaughtered here. Look at the wick. It came. Oh, it came down. Guys, you got to be fast, but holy fuck. Jesus. Here we go. Oh, wow. All right. So let's see what else comes out here. Fed inflation has eased somewhat, but remains elevated. Uh, repeats ongoing rate increases will be appropriate. That's why the market did what it did. Uh, so we're basically, uh, 450 to 475 right now, uh, for the basis points. Uh, -huh. what else fed considering the extent of future increases in interest rates. That's interesting. Ladies and gents, he sent me his address. So he wants them. I'm dude. I do it. I do a lot of things for content. It's fun. We got ankles at 500 likes. We got, what else we got here, team? We got Batman underwear outside the pants at fucking 1,000 likes, but you're never going to get that. All right, now it's right back up. So let's see. So this is a this is technically a dud right now, but you got to give it some time. It's 201. Your spy puts just printed. Hopefully you had a limit sell on there. 
All right, let's see what else we have from this. Fed removes references to COVID-19 pandemic and supply chain backups from statement. Fed says it will continue reducing its balance sheet as planned. Okay. All right, guys, keep slapping the like button on the way and helps out a whole lot with the algos over here. We're going to be getting the press conference in 28 minutes, 28 minutes. I'm excited. I know me too. I can't, I, again, I, I just can't wait to hear what he has to say. Like I'm already done trading for the day. Maybe I'll do something, but All right. Spy is drunk? Yeah, it is. That's. I mean, that's what it's going to do. It's just going to continue fucking around like this. Until Powell speaks at 2.30. Even zero days are expensive on Spy? Yeah. It, it fucks around on his first comments as well, like, for the first, like, five minutes of it. He says then... hello or good afternoon, and it just goes like, <clears throat> it freaks out a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Oh, man. Let's see. The five minutes looking like the one minute here. Look at the one minute. Dude, oh. the one minute's fun. Because <laughs> I have this on the one. It, it was pretty wild on the one minute. The five minute looks crazy. Oh, my God. Let's see. Ooh, what are we going to get, team? Dude, I'm so pumped for this millionaire interview. Uh, me, too. Like me too. I love oh my this. god! You I might heard? do it today. If I he can, was using I his IRA. It. What? He was using his IRA. Yeah, dude, it was a Roth. It's all tax free. Yeah, that's filthy. <laughs> Flat. Yeah, currently. Yeah, again, guys. Remember, last chance for fifty percent off lifetime is today. Um. And then you guys also get your two-week free trial. We just made our second millionaire of like the year. It's fucking J February. My goal is 10. 10 of you guys getting on with me, doing an interview when you guys become a millionaire. I, I can't wait, man. I mean, the, the tools that we provide you guys, best in class, and you see the results of it. There you go. Yeah. Doesn't it mean he can't pull out till he's older? Yeah, it's like 59 and a half or something. So he's got like 20 years or less, like 18 years. Oh, Market he? makers win, you all lose. I never play days like this anymore. Why do you think that I'm trading days like this? What, what, uh, dude, what are you talking about, David? <laughs> 10 on one as you need? No. David, you think like you're saying it like you just think that we're dumb. Oh, is it 55? Oh, perfect, Dutch ass. Uh, Snap puts printing. Nice. So will the guy from yesterday get his yacht? No. Spy had to go to 410. <laughs> <laughs> dude, there is some dude in here yesterday. All these people were like really being stupid yesterday in the live chat. They were like, it was, I think it's the Biden bots. I don't know how they've done that. But they're like, they're all saying like bull market. And then they say golden age and something like that too. It's always the same message. And then some other idiot came in here and was like, Sp spy 410 tomorrow. I'm going to be rich and get a yacht. And I was like, that's the dumbest shit I've ever heard. <laughs> wow. Wow. Even if you had enough money for a fucking yacht, do you know how much maintenance is on that thing on a monthly basis? Bro, it's crazy. Docking, gas, a staff. Oh you might as well live in it. Well, that's what they do, but still. Yeah, the boat that the boat, the giant yacht that I saw hit the other yacht, I think people live on it. So like, they just hit their fucking house. Uh, let's see. Did they say yet? Yeah, we've got 25 basis point rate hike. We're going to be getting statements from Powell uh, in a bit. I've got the press conference queued up here. So we'll be listening to that when it comes on. Oh, Gabe, when we do the press conference, you just got to mute yourself because if you say anything, it'll just like reverberate like in and yeah, out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nobody wants to hear me anyways. That's Don't not true. Trip. That is very false. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, I guess I, I got to get uh, I got to get all this uh, degeneracy out of my system now. 
Fair enough. Dude, this is such balls. a dud. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is this is a dud. I, we might get Powell to say something, or what is it? This way? Yeah, this price action right here, or it's more so like that way. No, um, there it is. This way, it's a dud. This is why we don't play Powell. Are you going to play the speech? Yeah, of course I'll play the speech. Rashad. The golden age is There it is. Us. He's those golden age dumbasses coming in here again. Banned. <laughs> Mods, if you see any of this golden age nonsense, just time it out. Yeah. All right, we're making a move for 405. It breaks. Oh. Oh no! <laughs> oh boy. Let's see. I was kind of saying zip it, Gabe. No, 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 no. The way that I play the interview is I have to put the mic next to the speaker. So if he says something, it'll come through to you guys, then also come through here and then revert into the speaker and it'll just like loop and echo. It's the golden age bull market. Yeah, these people are stupid. It's not the golden age bull market, bro. All right, guys, let's see. What are we at for likes? You guys hit 250 yet? Wow. You guys aren't even close to the ankle threshold, bro. Here comes Spy moving up. Let's actually check and see if there's anything else coming through the news feed. I don't think so. Yeah, it looks like a technical bounce here. Uh, VIX edges up. A little bit. Interest rate futures price in Fed terminal rate of 4.94% hitting in June after the Fed rate hike versus 4.92 just before. That's interesting. So it's like a two basis point increase there. U.S. futures still price in rate cuts this year. Even th how? The Fed literally told you. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, this market's a clown show. This is what you guys have to realize. What did Jerome Powell say at the last Fed meeting? There are no rate hikes in the SEP, which is the summary of economic projections, in 2023. The futures market says, fuck you, Powell. We're going to price in some rate hike, rate cuts. It's like, this is crazy. Yes. Literally, the Logan, news. Crazy. Logan, Moto, don't time out. Logan, Logan's fine. He's, all right, whatever. Oh, man. The news is what you get when uh, you give a liberal arts major a typewriter. The what? <laughs> the news is what you get when you give a liberal arts major a typewriter. Yeah. News is nonsense. Let's see. Uh... Oh, the pain. The pain. Yeah, I know he was timed out for the Golden Age, but I feel like, Mods, you should know what the Golden Age comments are. Like, it's like, oh, bull market's back. Didn't Logan say, like, Golden Age is crazy or something? Yeah. <laughs> like, you thought the meeting began at 11? No. No. Powell, it's the interest rate decisions at 2, and then at 2.30, Powell comes and speaks. So we're hitting 406. We haven't even broken high of the day yet, dude. 406.43. You've got a long way to go. <clears throat> you sent me those files so you can have them for the millionaire interview last week got hectic. Oh, sick. Did you? Oh, Nico, did you send those to me on Instagram? Let me see. Because those are, those are sick. I'm definitely going to use those for. Uh... Oh, fuck. Yeah, dude. Thank you. Let's see. <laughs> show gabe i did i did i showed all of them those are sweet dude have you eaten anything all day i haven't i'm fucking hungry me yeah i went out to get food because i just decided to be lazy and i forgot to do dishes like to put stuff in the dishwasher so i had to go out and get food i didn't have my six eggs for lunch like the king ruler I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lori's going to have your two. My what? <laughs> Let's 
city. I don't get why they're spamming in Golden Age. What's their angle? I honestly don't know. I, I, I what like it's almost like they just think they're like people are stupid enough to just like follow what people say in live chats on a YouTube stream. I don't know. Fuck around and find out. Yeah. Teaser almost got you. Yeah, let's see, guys. This is gonna be a fun one, man. I mean, again, this is th there's a little bit of calm before the storm here too. So this gives you guys enough time to get your two week free trials. And again, uh, all you existing members that want to hop over to Lifetime, just reach over to Diana. This is the last day to get fifty percent off. And then because then it changes over to the payment plan, and you get slightly less benefits. Uh, you don't get the master classes live, and you end up paying a little bit more over that ten months. That's it. I mean, I'll, <clears throat> I'll gladly take more money because I'm all about compound interest. And that's about, uh, what, 9.9% .9 interest on there. Mm -hmm. You know, and I get it. Hey, you know, some people rather uh, take those funds and invest it and make the money. And that is the smart way to go. Mm -hmm. But if you want access to us on Sunday school, 1348. Mm -hmm. Lifetime membership. Uh, let's see here. Right. We're making millionaires. I love yeah, being we are. able to say that. I love being able to say that. That's fun. We're making millionaires over here. Uh, let's see. Uh, <clears throat> what time's the master class this Sunday? Two. Well, well, I think we decided we were going to switch it back to two. Let's see. And then, yeah, you guys all get emailed the links to those. And if you are signing up now, um, you just have to reach out to Diana because she has all of the the master classes to to send you guys if you want to go through them. They've been killer. The the three that we've done so far have been nasty. You guys have been using the. I know Holden's been using the the stuff that we've talked about and just been killing it. You can only say that once you help create a millionaire. Oh, Cristiano, that's great. Do you know what uh the Second link in my description is my millionaire member interview. Do you know what the video that I'm making for you guys this week is? Oh, another one, because we just got another one, Cristiano. We got two. Mm -hmm. We got two. The proof is out there. It's undeniable. Uh, what do we got? 16 minutes? I'm getting out of the, the cannabis industry after six years and trading full time. You've been a member of the 1348 since it started. I volunteer to be the next millionaire. There you go, man. Let's do it. Is the masterclass just for lifetimers? Yeah, it is. It, you guys also get first uh, beta access to every new product that we release in the future, too. Let's see. Arvin, stop. Spy's kind of just teetering here. This is just a dud of an FOMC here. I mean, when when the market fully prices in 25 basis point rate hike, and then that's what it comes out as, I wouldn't expect to see any crazy movement. I mean, if you had a strangle on it and you had limit orders, you made a shitload of money. But at the same time, it's like you're playing with fire trying to play Powell guy. Let's see. Uh. Uh, U.S. rate futures priced in about an 85% chance of 25 basis point rate hike in March. A pause seen at 15.5%. Interesting. Arvid, correction, two eggs. <laughs> Why only two? You got something you want to share with us, bro? <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> jesus dude we have too much fun around here i love these streams dixie why are you guys freaking out about the dollar wait why does this why does this say simp 420 <laughs> oh that's the price of the stock dude it gave simp is at 420 right now who's that 420 <laughs> simp oh is that 420 yeah <laughs> it was great 
Where's the dollar? <laughs> Dollars just fucking around. This is just how it would move off of Powell, guys. Same deal. Spy's not doing anything, just hanging around at VWAP. The chat's just having way too much fun here, man. Like, they don't need us anymore. It's because everybody's making money. Nobody's pissed. Like, we just sit around here. We just guide the way. We're just babysitters at this point. My God. Ooh, spy slippage. 30% in the green for January. Traffic lights have helped so much. Thank you, 1348 crew. PK. Good shit, dude. Wow. Good shit, team. Uh, there's 25,000 people watching Meet Kevin, but not even Meet Kevin prints like we print. Nope. Can someone go on his live stream and just call him a fucking Alki? Jesus. Yeah, remember he got arrested? I do remember that. Yeah. So stop fucking around and drinking like you do, bro. That could be you. We don't need that bad Ooh. press. I don't drive. I Uber. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I could probably walk too. It's just cold, dude. It's supposed to be like negative thirty-five degree wind chill here this weekend. I'm not going outside. <laughs> Rest in peace, nipples. Um, damn. <laughs> you gonna get frostbite on the nips, bro? Dude, I'm gonna stay my ass indoors. Fucking snap, crackle, and pop. I won't stop you from stealing a car, though. I'm not going to steal a car, bro. Uh, let's see. These 500 here are, are much better traders than Kevin's 25K. Yeah, dude. Oh, <laughs> you, guys this, you guys are monsters. You guys are monsters. Oh, my God. This is a fact. Uh, STB, what car are you giving away? It says in the terms and conditions and the, the disclaimer at the bottom of a of platform that I will never give away a car. Is this really on platform? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, seriously? Yeah, have you read it? How did this get by me? On the Who bottom, the on the very bottom, there's like there's like fine print. <laughs> It's on the sign up page. Like if you just type in trade1348.com, it's there. All right, guys. Jeez. Did you find it? <laughs> Dude, <laughs> Andy is <laughs> just trying to keep you out of trouble as much as possible here. This is fucking I wild. I know. Because they said they um, told me that one day, and I was like, what? I was like, that can't be real. And then I looked at it, I was like, that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, traffic light let's see oh man it said nothing about the 150k no you're right it doesn't yeah yeah man so so you think emily's watching the stream i don't know bro i think jade's watching the stream what about the other ones they don't get any love <laughs> just throwing random names out there i know i'm not doing drugs in the bathroom i'm just efficient with my time stv or chat gpt dude arvin those chat gpt quotes are hilarious have you seen those gabe arvin made a list of the funny shit that i say on stream then put it in chat gpt and was like make more quotes it's hilarious oh geez um Oh, Peace and Love is a glass artist, so he could make $1 million awards. That would be sick. Yes. So he could give you guys a little plaque when you hit a million? Yes. Oh, I would love to do that. Yes. Peace and Love. Let's 100% do that. Yeah, because we have we have two millionaires right now. We have Jason. That's the first millionaire interview. And then we're going to be having the uh, the other one, too, with Dutch Ass coming. Um, probably within the next week. I got to see when he can meet up for an interview. Um, but that's going to be, that's two guys. My goal is 10 for this year, 10 millionaire interviews. 
you're not seeing it done like we do it over here, team. So again, don't get left behind. The price that monthly's at right now is not going to stay there forever. And today's the last day for 50% off lifetime. Okay. Uh, let's see, Borg says, uh, Gabe STB wanted to say thank you for those traffic lights. January's port was up 88%. That's ridiculous. Can't wait for February. That's going to be sick, dude. Yeah, that's going to be sick. Um, also, can you make something for Emily to strap on? Preferably smoked glass. <laughs> You you're a on one today. <laughs> <laughs> My company downsized and I was let go a few weeks ago, but thanks to you guys, I can trade for a living now. The best part is that my wife is totally on board. Thanks, boys. My Matthew, that is fucking awesome, dude. Congratulations, man. I mean, not on the losing your job, but being able to trade for full time. Oh man! What Seven more mean? minutes before Apollo just starts uh, uh, talking what the puppets want him to talk about. Mm -hmm. You guys are also halfway there on the like threshold for ankles today. Imagine we have Powell, we have another millionaire, and we get ankles all in the same day, Gabe. That would be a that would be a wild day. <laughs> that would be. But I want more. Like, I really want to see the market burn. Like, I have a plan here, but I need the market to burn. Depends on what he says. Thanks. He uh, goes to you guys without 1348. It wouldn't be possible. Matthew, that's awesome, man. I'm glad. I'm glad that you took that step. And, and I, honestly, man, I mean, this is it's protecting you against kind of like the worst case scenario of things that could happen if you're working a job. This is kind of one of the things that we were talking about yesterday in one of the I think um, Apple Jacks might be able to make a clip of that with the having a job and trading thing that we were talking about. It's like there's nothing wrong with having a job, guys. It's, it's multiple streams of income is the thing that you guys want. Um, and the other thing is, too, is that you have multiple streams of income and one goes away. You still have the other one. You're protecting Thanks. yourself. You're basically hedging yourself against something crazy going on. Yeah, yeah. I got nothing right now. Like, honestly, the volatility on uh, this FOMC was nowhere near what I had expected. No, it can always pick up, but, like, they priced in 25 basis points so much, and if that's what it comes out as, it's like, all right, there it is. I mean, that, that one-minute candle was pretty big to 402.40, but other than that... It's a dud. Uh, which one? It, it was pretty big. Which one? The the first one minute candle at two. You want to describe it again? It was large. That's what she said. See, that's how you use it. I, hey, I think the way that I used it before was pretty good. It, it served. No, it served you used it on perfect. yourself. <laughs> 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 Oh Hedging God. for a recession and possible job loss with 1348. Yeah. Five more minutes. Yeah. We're going to be getting Papa Powell coming on here in a minute. <laughs> fucking Arvin is just fucking with you. Right uh, yeah. Now. Arvin, I'm going to come over there and I'm going to yell at you. And then I'm not going to take you to the playground. Oh man. <laughs> then trust me, the playground's a fucking great time. Wait, and wait, you, you, you plan on taking Arvin to the playground? Yes. Oh, this I have to see. Yeah, I am Gabe and I so, can take Arvin to the playground. I, I am so there for this one. Uh, you have a question about something in the uh, master class. What's the uh, best way to ask in chat or market talk? You can ask here. I mean, it, you unless you're asking about how to get the master class, you got to be a lifetime member. 
He's also t- – yeah, Tyler, I'll take you to the playground too. When you're 21. Yeah, when you're 21. Hey, but, dude, your dad's pretty cool, man. Got you a 2020 BMW 330 guy. Uh, 330 guy? Not bad. Yeah. Must be a good kid. Yeah. I'll go. You can come, but you must come alone. Yes, Arvin. I mean, yes. Yes. Okay. This is not a place for... To bring your wife. Wait, 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 wait. One, one question for Tyler. Is it manual? It better be. If it's a 2020, I don't think they make it a manual anymore. Do they not? Oh, I could bring Tyler to Canada. I can't bring all of you to the playground. We would literally have to buy the entire place. Uh, uh, they don't make... Yeah. It has paddles. Ooh. Oh, it's not the same thing. Dude, I love driving stick. That's what she said. <sighs> <laughs> Encore? Dude, we could go to Encore. Encore is fun. Oh man. Yeah, the seven series is that's a different that's a different animal. I love that car. Let's see. For now. Well, I'm just gonna tell the uh let's see here, hold on. Do, 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 do. <laughs> oh man. Hey, right, two minutes. Two minutes, less than two here. Or it's about to be one. Let's see. Your son, you made your son learn to drive a manual on a Beamer. He hated it. Now, uh, now he loves it. Yeah. Let's see. Oh yes, I have bouncies in all of my cars. Yes, all of my cars have bouncies. Uh, basically, a GPS tracker. Oh, that's pretty cool. Oh, well, you should, especially if they're if some of them are on uh are on yeah, tr- yeah, yeah, yeah. They all have trackers. What's happening, team? Suchin or Sanjay? Sorry, buddy. Um, not much, man. We're just waiting for Powell to come on in a second. Which, let's see, they're usually a little late with them. Manual. Do you know how to drive manual? Do you know how to drive manual? Me? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. That's the only way you're gonna drive that Ferrari, brother. Mm-mm-mm. They don't make them with stick anymore. They need to. I know they're about to be all electric too. Everything's going to go electric and that pisses me off. I like the noise. If they do, if they do that fake sound nonsense, I don't want synthetic bullshit sound. I want real sound on my car. All right. Two 30. Here we go. Team hit that like button on the way in. Let's listen to some Powell. I'm watching the door. Let's see. It's like fucking Groundhog Day when Powell comes out. Let's see. He's not out yet. You know there's a special edition uh, 992 Porsche 2023 that comes in stick. No way. Yeah. Get yourself a Porsche. Oh, here he is. What the? How is there no fucking sound? Why are they doing this again? 
Hold on. Let me see if I can grab it here. Hold on. I don't know why it does it. Audio. Hold on. Hold on. I don't know why it does it. Hold on. Why is it? Why is it doing? Audio input. Audio output. Hmm. <laughs> Why does it do that? That's so strange. Hold on, team. Keep the like button on the way in. For some reason, now it won't let me do the way I used to do it. Yeah, like clockwork. Look at her go. Here to be weighing. Let's try that. Business fixed investment. Despite the slowdown in growth, the labor market remains extremely tight with the unemployment rate at a 50 year low, job vacancies still very high and wage growth elevated. Job gains have been robust with employment rising by an average of 247,000 jobs per month over the last three months. Although the pace of job gains has slowed over the course of the past year and nominal wage growth has shown some signs of easing, the labor market continues to be out of balance. Labor demand substantially exceeds the supply of available workers. And the labor force participation rate has changed little from a year ago. Inflation remains well above our longer run goal of 2%. Over the 12 months ending in December, total PCE prices rose 5.0%. Excluding the volatile food and energy categories, core PCE prices rose 4.4%. The inflation data received over the past three months show a welcome reduction in the monthly pace of increases. And while recent developments are encouraging, we will need substantially more evidence to be confident that inflation is on a sustained downward path. Despite elevated inflation, longer term inflation expectations appear to remain well anchored, as reflected in a broad range of surveys of households, businesses and forecasters, as well as measures from financial markets. But that's not grounds for complacency. Although inflation has moderated recently, it remains too high. The longer the current bout of high inflation continues, the greater the chance that expectations of higher inflation will become entrenched. The Fed's monetary policy actions are guided by our mandate to promote maximum employment and stable prices for the American people. My colleagues and I are acutely aware that high inflation imposes significant hardship as it erodes purchasing power, especially for those least able to meet the higher costs of essentials like food, housing, and transportation. We are highly attentive to the risks that inflation poses to both sides of our mandate, and we are strongly committed to a returning inflation to our 2% objective. At today's meeting, the committee raised the target range for the federal funds rate by 25 basis points, bringing the target range to four and a half to four and three quarters percent. And we are continuing the process of significantly reducing the size of our balance sheet. With today's action, we have raised interest rates by four and a half percentage points over the past year. We continue to anticipate that ongoing increases in the target range for the federal funds rate will be appropriate in order to attain a stance of monetary policy that is sufficiently restrictive to return inflation to 2% over time. We are seeing the effects of our policy actions on demand in the most interest sensitive sectors of the economy, particularly housing. It will take time, however, for the full effects of monetary restraint to be realized, especially on inflation. In light of the cumulative tightening of monetary policy and the lags with which monetary policy affects economic activity and inflation, the committee decided to raise interest rates by 25 basis points today, continuing the step down from last year's rapid pace of increases. Shifting to a slower pace will better allow the committee to assess the economy's progress toward our goals as we determine the extent of future increases that will be required to attain a sufficiently restrictive stance. We'll continue to make our decisions meeting by meeting, take into a, taking into account the totality of incoming data 
and their implications for the outlook for economic activity and inflation. We have been taking forceful steps to moderate demand so that it comes into better alignment with supply. Our overarching focus is using our tools to bring inflation back down to our 2% goal, longer term inflation expectations well anchored. Reducing inflation is likely to require a period of below trend growth and some softening of labor market conditions. Strong price stability is essential to set the stage for achieving maximum employment and stable prices over the longer run. The historical record cautions strongly against prematurely loosening policy. We will stay the course until the job is done. To conclude, we understand that our actions affect communities, families, and businesses across the country. Everything we do is in service to our public mission. We at the Fed will do everything we can to achieve our maximum employment and price stability goals. Thank you, and I look forward to your questions. Uh, Chris Rugebert of Associated Press, uh, thank you for doing this. Uh, as you know, financial conditions have loosened since the fall with bond yields falling, uh, which has also brought down mortgage rates, uh, and the stock market posted a solid gain in January. Does that make your job of combating inflation harder? And could you see lifting rates higher than you otherwise would to offset the increase in, or to offset the easing of financial conditions? So it is important that overall financial conditions continue to reflect the policy restraint that we're putting in place in order to bring inflation down to 2%. And of course, financial conditions have tightened very significantly over the past year. Uh, I would say that our focus is not on short-term moves, but on sustained changes to broader financial conditions. And it is our judgment that we're not yet at a sufficiently restrictive policy stance, which is why we say that we expect ongoing hikes will be appropriate. Of course, many things affect financial conditions, uh, not just our policy. Um, and we will take into account overall financial conditions along with many other factors as we, as we set policy. Rachel. Hi, Chair Powell. Thank you for taking our questions. Rachel Siegel from The Washington Post. Over the last quarter, we've seen a deceleration in prices, in wages, and a fall in consumer spending, all while the unemployment rate has been able to stay at a historic low. Does this at all change your view of how much the unemployment rate would need to go up, if at all, to see inflation come down to the levels you're looking for? So I, I would say it is, a, it is a good thing that the, the disinflation that we have seen so far has not come at the expense of a weaker labor market. But I would also say that, that that disinflationary process that you now see underway uh, is really at an early stage. Uh, what you see is really uh, in the goods sector, you see inflation uh, now coming down uh, because uh, supply chains have been fixed, demand is shifting back to services and uh, uh, shortages are, have been abated. So you see that in the um, uh, in the in the in the other in in the uh, housing services sector. We expect inflation to continue moving up uh, for a while, but then to come down, assuming that new leases continue to be lower. So in those two sectors, you've got a good story. Uh, the issue is that we have a, a large sector called non-housing service, core non-housing services, where we don't see disinflation yet. But I, I would say that um, so far, what we see is uh, is progress, but without without any weakening in labor market conditions. Has um, your oh, Go ahead. Has your expectation for where the unemployment rate might go changed since December? You know, we're going to write down uh, new forecasts at the March meeting, and we'll see at that time. I will say that it is gratifying to see the disinflationary process now getting underway, and we continue to get strong labor market data. Uh, so, but you know, we'll update those forecasts in, in March. Neil. Uh, hi, Chair Powell. Neil Irwin with Axios. Um, uh, you and some of your colleagues have emphasized the possibility that job openings could come down and that uh, that would let some of the air out of the labor market without major job losses. We saw the opposite in the December jolts this morning, uh, job openings actually rising. Uh, that also has co coincided with, with uh, slowdown in wage inflation. Uh, do you believe that openings are an important indicator to be studying to, to understand where the labor market is and where wage inflation might be heading? So you're right about the data, of course. What we um, we did see, we've seen uh, average hourly earnings and now the uh, employment cost index abating a little bit, still 
off of their highs of six months ago and, and more, but still at levels that are that are that are fairly elevated. Um, the job openings uh, number has in jolts has been quite volatile that uh, recently, and I did see that it moved up back up this morning. I, I do think that uh, it's probably an important indicator. The, the ratio, I guess, is back up to 1.9 job openings to um, uh, to unemployed people, people who are looking for work. So it's an it's an indicator, but nonetheless, we you're right. We do see uh, wages moving down. If you look across the rest of the labor market, you still see very high uh, uh, payroll job creation, um, and uh, uh, you know quits are still at an elevated level. So many, many, by many, many indicators, uh, the job market is still very strong. Uh, Colby and then Howard. Thank you. Colby Smith with the Financial Times. Uh, given the economic data since the December meeting, is the trajectory for the Fed funds rate in the most recent SEP still the best guidepost uh, for the policy path forward? Uh, or does ongoing now mean uh, more than two uh, rate rises now? So you're right, at the December meeting, we all wrote down our, our best estimates of, of what we thought the ultimate level would be. And that's obviously back in December. And the median for that was between five and five and a quarter percent. Um, at the March meeting, we're gonna update those assessments. We did not update them today. We did, however, continue to say that we believe ongoing rate hikes will be appropriate to attain a, a sufficiently restrictive stance of policy to bring inflation back down to 2%. Um, we think we've covered a lot of ground and financial conditions have certainly tightened. Uh, and I would say uh, we still think there's work to do there. We haven't made a decision on, on exactly where that will be. I think, you know, we're going to be looking carefully foolish. at the incoming data between now and the March meeting and then the May meeting. Um, I, I, uh, I don't feel a lot of certainty about uh, where that where that will be. It could certainly be higher than we're writing down right now. If we come to the view that we need to write down uh, to, you know, to, to move rates up beyond what we said in December, we would certainly do that. At the same time, if the data come in in the other direction, then we'll, you know, we'll make data dependent decisions at coming meetings, of course. Just as a quick follow up, how are you viewing the kind of balance of risk between those two options of, um, you know, the, the likelihood of maybe falling short of that or, or going beyond that level? I, I guess I would say it this way. Um, I continue to think that, uh, it's very difficult to manage the risk of doing too little and finding out in six or 12 months that we actually were close but didn't get the job done. Inflation springs back and we have to go back in. And now you really do worry about expectations getting uh, unanchored and that kind of thing. This is a very difficult risk to manage. Whereas, uh, I, you know, of course, we, we have no incentive and no desire to, to over tighten, but we, you know, if we if we feel like we've gone too far, we can certainly could, could certain and inflation is coming down faster than we expect. Then we have tools that would that would work on that. So I, I do think that in this situation where we have still the highest inflation in 40 years, you know, the job is not fully done. As I mentioned, started to mention earlier, we have a, a sector that represents 56 percent of the core inflation index where we don't see disinflation yet. So. We, we don't see it. It's not happening yet. Inflation in, in the core services X, uh, X housing is still running at 4% on a six and 12 month basis. So there's not nothing happening there. In the other two sectors representing, you know, less than 50%, you actually, I think, now have a, a story that is credible that's coming together, although you don't actually see disinflation yet in housing services, but, but it's in the pipeline, right? So for the, for the third sector, we, we don't see anything here. So I think it would be premature, we very premature to declare victory or to, to think that we've really got this. We need to see, our, our goal of course, is to bring inflation down. And how do, we, how do we get that done? There are many, many factors driving inflation in that sector and they should be coming into play to, to have inflation, the disinflationary process begin in that sector. But so far we don't see that. And I think until we do, we see ourselves as having a lot of work left to do. Uh, Howard Shire with Reuters, and, and thanks as usual. So I just wanted to connect a couple dots here. The, the statement made a number of, of changes uh, that seem to be saying things are getting better. You're saying inflation has eased, uh, has eased. Uh, that's new. Uh, you've taken out references to the war in Ukraine as causing price increases. You've taken out references to the <coughs> pandemic. You've uh, eliminated all the reasons that you said prices were being driven higher 
yet that's not mapping to any change in how you describe policy. We still have ongoing increases to come. So I'm wondering why is that the case? And does it have more to do with uncertainty around the outlook or more to do with you not wanting to give a very overeager market a reason to get ahead of itself and overreact? So I guess I would, uh, would say it this way. Uh, we can now say, I think, for the first time that the disinflationary process has started. We can see that, and we see it really in goods prices so far. Goods prices is a big sector. We, this is what we thought would happen since the very beginning, and now here it is actually happening. And for the reasons we thought, we, you know, it's supply chains, it's shortages, and it's demand revolving back towards services. So this is a good thing. This is a good thing. But that's you know around a quarter of the PCE price index, core PCE price index. So the second sector is is housing services, and that's driven by very different things. And we, as I mentioned, with housing services, we expect, and other forecasters expect, that measured inflation will continue moving up for several months, but will then come down, assuming that, that new leases continue to be soft. And we do assume that. So we think that that's sort of in the pipeline. And we actually see this inflation in the goods sector, and we see it in the pipeline for two sectors that amount to a little less than half. So this, this is good. And that we note that when we say inflation is coming down, that this is good. We expect to see that that disinflation process will be seen, we hope soon, in the core goods uh, X housing, sorry, the core, core services X housing sector that I talked about. We don't see it yet. It's, you know, it's, a, it's seven or eight different kinds of services. Uh, not all of them are the same. And, you know, we have a sense of what's going on in each of those different uh, subsections, um, uh, uh, probably the biggest part of it, probably 60% of, of that will is, you know, uh, research would show is sensitive to slack in the economy. And so the labor market will probably be important. Some of the other ones, it's, the labor market's not going to be important. Many other factors will drive it. In any case, we don't see disinflation in that sector yet. And I think we need to see that it's the majority of the core PC index, which is the thing that we think is the best predictor of headline PCE, which is our mandate. So it's not that we're not, we're neither optimistic nor pessimistic. We're just telling you that we, we don't see inf inflation moving down yet in that large sector. I think we will fairly soon, but we don't see it yet. Until we do, I think we, you know, we see ourselves, we gotta be honest with ourselves, we see ourselves as having perhaps more persistent, we'll see more persistent inflation in that sector, which will take longer to get down. Um, and we're just gonna have to, we have to complete the job. I mean, that's that's what we're here for. <clears throat> Nick Timoros, The Wall Street Journal. Uh, Chair Powell, you observed several years ago that we learned we can have a low unemployment rate without above target inflation. And we have learned lately that inflation can come down from its uncomfortably high level despite a historically low unemployment rate. Given that, and, and given how much you did over the last year, why do you think further rate increases are needed? Why not stop here and see what transpires in the coming months before raising rates again? So we, you know, we've raised rates four and a half percentage points, and we're talking about a couple of more rate hikes to get to that level we think is appropriately restrictive. And why do we think that's probably necessary? We think because inflation is still running very hot. We're, of course, taking into account long and variable lags. We're thinking about that. Um, it really, it, it, the story we're telling about inflation is in, to ourselves and the way we understand it is we're basically the three things that I've just gone through a couple of times. And again, we don't see it affecting the services sector X, X housing yet. Um, but I mean, I think our assessment is that we're not very far from that level. Uh, we don't know that though. We don't know that. So I think we're, we're, you know, we're living in a world of significant uncertainty. I would look across the the rate the, the spectrum of rates and see that real rates are now positive, right by you know by an appropriate uh, set of measures are positive across the yield curve. I think policy is restrictive. We're trying to make a, a fine judgment about how much is restrictive enough. That's all. And we're going to you know that's why we're slowing down to twenty five basis points. We're going to be carefully watching the economy and watching inflation and watching the progress Thank of the disinflationary you. process. Did you or your colleagues discuss? <clears throat> The, the conditions for a pause at this meeting uh, this week? We, you know, you'll see the, the minutes will come out in three weeks and we'll give you a lot of detail. I, you know, we spent a lot of time talking about the path ahead and, uh, and the state of the economy. And, 
I wouldn't want to start to drive the, the describe all the details there, but that was the sense of the discussion was really talking quite a bit about the path forward. Victoria. Um, hi, Chair Powell. I wanted to ask about um, the debt ceiling. Um, given that we've now hit up against it, um, I was wondering if the U.S. goes past the X date, will the Fed do whatever the Treasury directs as it relates to making payments as the fiscal agent, or will it do it do its own analysis of any legal constraints? So your question is, would we say your question again? Will the Fed do what Treasury directs as it relates to making payments, or will it do its own analysis of any legal constraints? So you're really asking about, but I, I, you're asking about prioritization in effect. Is what yes, you're, okay. yes. So I, I, I feel like I have to say this. There's only one way forward here, and that is for Congress to raise the debt ceiling so that the United States government can pay all of its obligations when due. And any deviations from that path would be highly risky and that no one should assume that the Fed can protect the economy from the consequences of failing to act in a timely manner. In terms of our relationship with the Treasury, we are their fiscal agent, and I'm just going to leave it at that. Are, are you actively doing any planning of, of what might happen in the event that that would happen? I'm, I'm just going to leave it at that. This is a matter that's to be resolved between really, it's really Congress's job to raise the debt ceiling, and uh, I gather there are discussions happening, but they don't involve us. We're, we're not... Uh, we're not involved in those discussions, so we're the fiscal agent. <clears throat> Gina Emiski. Uh, Gina Smiley from the New York Times. Thanks for taking our questions. I wonder, was there any discussion today of the possibility of pausing rate increases and then restarting them? Lori Logan from the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas seemed to suggest that that would be a possibility in a recent speech, and I wonder if that view is broadly shared on the committee. So um, the committee, obviously, did not see this as a time to pause. We judged that the appropriate you know, thing to do at this meeting was to raise the federal funds rate by 25 basis points. And we said that we continue to anticipate that ongoing increases in the target range will be appropriate in order to attain that stance of sufficiently restrictive monetary policy that will bring inflation down to 2%. So that's, that's the judgment that we made. Um, you know, we're going to we're going to write down new forecasts in March and uh, uh, and we'll, you know, we'll certainly be looking at the incoming data as everyone else will. Sorry, I should have been clear. I mean, would it be possible to take a meeting off, for example, and then resume? You know, could you rather than just doing at every meeting the move, go a little bit more slowly, take some gaps in between moves? I mean, <clears throat> I think I, this is not something that the committee is thinking about or exploring in any kind of detail in principle, though. You know, we used to the thing we used to do was go every other meeting, if you remember, 25 basis points, and that was considered a fast pace. Um, so I think a lot of options are available. And uh, I mean, you saw what the Bank of Canada did, and you know, they left it that they're willing to to raise rates after pausing. But this is not something that this is not something that the that the uh, Federal Open Market Committee is uh, on the on the point of deciding right now. <clears throat> Steve Leesman, CNBC. Mr. Chairman, um, the SEP has the uh, PCE inflation rate in 2023 at 3.1%. Meanwhile, the three-month annualized PCE is 2.1%, and you've achieved this uh, without going to your 5.1% uh, funds rate, which is what you have penciled in for this year. Um, and you've also achieved it without the one percentage point increase in the unemployment rate, which you have penciled in for this year. I'm wondering if you've considered the idea of whether or not um, your understanding of the inflation dynamic may be wrong, and uh, it's possible to achieve these things without raising rates that high, um, and also without um, uh, without the surge in unemployment. And specifically, I wonder if you might comment on the uh, speech given by uh, Vice Chair Lel Brainerd, who said, to the extent that inputs other than wages may be responsible in part for important price increases for some non-housing services, an unwinding of these factors. In other words, it may not be wages the idea that it may not require unemployment rising to get this sector of inflation under control. Thanks. So a couple things. First, on the on the forecast, um, you, if you're right. If you take very short term, three three months, say measures of PCE core PCE inflation, they, they're quite low right now. But that's because that's driven by uh, you know significantly negative readings from goods uh, inflation. 
most forecasters and uh, would would think that the the, the significantly negative readings will be transitory, and that goods inflation will move up fairly soon back up to its longer run trend of something around zero, something like that. So a lot of forecasts would call for core PCE to go back up to 4% by the middle of the year, for example. So that's really where the sustainable level is, is more like at 4%. So that would suggest there's there's work left to do. Uh, you know, let's let's say inflation does come down much faster than we expect, which is, which is possible. As I mentioned, you know, obviously our policy is data dependent, we would take that into account. In terms of, of um, the non, sorry, the core non-housing services, as, as I mentioned earlier, it's a very diverse sector, six or seven sectors. And um, so sectors that represent 55 or 60% of that uh, subsectors of, of that sector um, are, we think are sensitive to slack in the economy, sensitive to the labor market in a way. But some of the other sectors are, are not. And for example, you know, financial services is, is a big sector that's really not driven by, by, uh, by uh, uh, labor, labor markets, wages. Um, so that's why I said there, there are a number of things that will affect, take, take, take restaurants, right? So clearly labor is important for restaurants, but so are food prices. And, you know, transportation services is going to be driven by, by uh, fuel prices, uh, for example. So there are lots of things in that mix that will drive inflation. I would say overall, though, my own view would be that you're not going to have a, you know, a sustainable return to 2% inflation in that sector without a better balance in the labor market. And um, I don't know what that will require in terms of, of increased unemployment, your question. Um, I do think uh, there are a number of dimensions through which the labor market can soften. And uh, so far, we've, we've, we've got, as I mentioned, in goods, we have inflation moving down without the softening in the labor market. I think most forecasters would say that uh, that unemployment will probably rise a bit from here. But I still think, I continue to think, that there's a path to getting inflation back down to 2% without a really significant economic decline or a significant increase in unemployment. And that's that's because this the, you know the, the setting we're in is quite different. The, the the inflation that we originally got was very much a collision between very strong demand and hard supply constraints. Not something that you really have seen in, in prior uh, you know in prior business cycles. And so now we see goods inflation coming down for the reasons we thought, and um, we we understand why housing inflation will come down. And I think will a story will emerge on on the. Uh, non-housing services sector soon enough but i think there is there's ongoing disinflation and we don't yet see uh you know we don't yet see weakening in the labor market so we'll have to see can we get there with five percent certainly possible yeah absolutely it's possible you know it's a question no one really knows i think it's because this is this this is not like the other business cycles in so many ways um it may well be uh that as as that it will take more slowing than than we expect than I expect to get inflation down to two percent. But I don't I don't. That's not my base case. My base case is that uh, the economy can return to two percent inflation without a really significant downturn or a really big increase in unemployment. I think that's that's a possible outcome. Um, I think many many forecasters would say it's not the most likely outcome, but but I, I would say there's there's a there's a chance of it. Michael. Uh, Michael McKee from Bloomberg TV and Radio. I'd like to pick up on uh, what you were just saying about a uh, substantial downturn and ask with uh, the full weight of your tightening not in place yet and uh, with the progress against inflation, there's still a lot of talk about uh, very, very slow growth going forward in 2023. And the recession indicators are all suggesting uh, that we are going to see recession this year. So I'm wondering if you've changed your view or you have a more nuanced view of what you think the danger to uh, economic growth is going forward and whether you're very close to uh, perhaps tipping it into the wrong place, which calls for more restraint on your part. So I, I do think you most forecasts and, and you know my own assessment would be that that uh, growth will continue positive growth will continue but at a subdued pace as it did last year we had growth of uh, gdp growth of one percent last year and also 
final sales growth, which you think is which we think is a better indicator of about one percent. I think you know most forecasts, and, and certainly my assessment would be that growth will continue at, at, at a fairly uh, subdued level this year. Um, there are other factors though that need to be considered. You you will have seen that the global picture is uh, is improving a bit. Uh, and, and that will matter for us potentially. The labor market remains very, very strong. And that's job creation, that's wages. Um, as inflation does come down, sentiment will improve. You also, um, state and local governments are, are really flush these days with, uh, with you know, money and many of them are considering tax cuts or even sending checks. So I think that's going to support. They're also spending a lot. There's a lot of spending coming in the construction pipeline, both private and public, and so that's going to support economic activity. So I, I think there's a there's, there's a good chance that that those factors will help support positive growth this year, and that's my base case is is that that, that there will be positive growth this year. Rich. Thank you. Rich Miller from Bloomberg. First of all, uh, how are you doing? Uh, Fine, thanks. Fine. Good. good. Uh, second off, um, I think if earlier on in the press conference, you, you, you said you uh, need to see substantially more evidence uh, uh, of inflation com uh, coming down. Uh, can you give us some idea of what you're thinking of? You mentioned three months that we've seen three months in a row. Governor Walter suggested he might want to see six months. Is it just the inflation data, or do you have to see the uh, the labor market coming back into better balance to have that substantially more evidence? Uh, so I, I, I don't think there's a you know going to be a light switch flipped or anything like that. I think it's just an accumulating accumulation of evidence. So of course we'll be looking by the time of, of the March meeting, we'll have two more employment reports, two more CPI reports, and we'll be looking at those carefully as as all of us will, and we'll be asking ourselves what are they telling us and it, and uh, uh, soon after that, we'll have another uh, ECI uh, uh, wage report, which, as you know, is is a report that we we like because it adjusts for composition and it's very complete. And uh, you know, the one we got, uh, I guess it was yesterday, was um, was constructive. It's you know, it's, it shows wages coming down, but still at a, at a high level. They're still they're still at, at a level that's way above, where, well above where they were before the uh, uh, before the uh, pandemic. So. I, I don't want to put a number on it in terms of months, but as, as the accumulated evidence comes in, it's going to be reflected in our assessment of the outlook, and that will be it, that will be reflected in our policy over time. But I, I will say though, we, you know, it is our job to restore price stability and achieve two percent inflation for the benefit of the American public. We're not market participants have a very different job. It's a fine job. It's a great job. I, in fact, I did that job for for years, but. Um, in one form or another, but uh, you know we have to deliver that, and so we are strongly resolved that we will you know complete this task because we think it has benefits that will uh, you know support economic activity and benefit the public for for many many years. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Fed Chairman, um, for taking the questions. So you've talked about we had solid. Uh, job growth. I'm um, Edward Lawrence from Fox Business, by the way. We had solid job growth, a slight falling in the increase in consumer spending. Um, it seems so far it's been relatively mild uh, from the economy to go to from a 9.1% CPI inflation to 6.5% CPI inflation. Is the hard part yet to come to go from 6.5 to 2? I don't think we know, honestly. You know, the uh, so we, of course, expected goods inflation to start coming down by the end of 2021, and it didn't. It didn't come down all through 22, and now it's coming down. And it's coming down pretty fast. So I would say these are. This is not a standard business cycle where you can look at the last 10 times there was a global pandemic and we shut the economy down, and uh, Congress did what it did and we did what we did. It's just it's unique. So I think certainty is just not appropriate here. Inflation, it's just harder to forecast inflation. It may come down faster. It may take longer to come down. And, you know, our job is to deliver inflation back to target, and we will do that. But I think we, we're we going to be cautious about about declaring victory and, you know, sending signals that uh, that we think that the, the game is won because, it, you know, it's, we've got a long way to go. It's just it's the early stages of disinflation, and it's most welcome to be able to say that, that we are now in disinflation, but 
that's great. But we, we just see that it has to spread through the economy and that it's going to take some time. That's all. Do you, how long do you see then the federal funds rate remaining at this elevated level? You know, so our, again, our, the, my forecast and that of my colleagues, as you will see from the SEP, and I mean, there are many different forecasts, but generally it's a forecast of slower growth, some softening in labor market conditions and inflation moving down, moving down steadily, but not quickly. And in that case, uh, if, if the economy performs broadly in line with those expectations, it will not be appropriate to, to cut rates this year, to loosen policy this year. Of course, other people have forecasts with, with inflation coming down much faster. That's a different thing. You know, if that happens, if inflation comes down much faster, you know, then we'll be seeing that and, and it will be incorporated into our thinking about policy. Simon. Thank you, Chair Powell. Simon Rinovich with The Economist. I may ask a, a further question about the language around ongoing increases. Uh, that, of course, implies at least two further rate rises. Uh, if you look at Fed fund futures pricing, uh, the implication is that you'll raise rates one more time uh, and then pause. Are you concerned about that divergence uh, or do you think if everything breaks right, is that is that a plausible outcome? I'm, I'm not I'm not particularly concerned about about the divergence, no, because it's it is largely due to the market's expectation that inflation will move down more quickly. I think that's that's the the, the bigger part of that. Um, so again, as, as I just mentioned, we, uh, you know, our forecasts, there are different participants have different forecasts, but generally those forecasts are for continued subdued growth, some softening in the labor market, but not a recession, not a recession. And, and we have inflation moving down, um, you know, into the somewhere in the mid threes or maybe lower than that this year. We'll update that in March, but that's what we thought in December. Markets are, are past that. They, they show inflation coming down in some cases much quicker than that. So we'll just have to see. Um, and we have a different view and a different view. It's a different forecast, really. Um, and uh, given our outlook, I, I, I just I don't see us cutting rates this year if we get our uh, if our outlook turns true. As I mentioned just now, if, if we do see inflation coming down much more quickly, that'll that'll play into our policy saying, of course. Hi, Chair Bell. Scott Horsley for NPR. Um, one of the changes in the statement this, this month is that the committee is no longer listing public health as among the data points you'll consider in assessing conditions. What should we make of that? Does the Federal Reserve no longer see the pandemic as, as weighing on the economy? That's the general sense of it. Look, we understand, I personally understand well that, that, that uh, COVID is still out there, um, but uh, it, it, that it's no longer playing an important role role in our economy and you know we kept that statement in there for uh, for quite a while and i think we just we knew we would take it out at some point there's never a perfect time but we thought that uh you know people are handling it better and the economy and the society are handling it better now it doesn't really need to be in a you know in the feds uh, uh monthly uh, or you know meet post meeting statement as an ongoing economic risk as opposed to you know a health issue nancy <clears throat> Hi, Chair Powell, Nancy Marshall Genser uh, with Marketplace. I wanted to go back to another thing that Fed Vice Chair Lael Brainerd said recently. Um, she said she doesn't see signs of a wage price spiral. And I'm wondering if you agree with that. I do. Yeah, I do. I, I, I don't see that yet. But the whole point is, you know, if you once you see it, it you're, you, you have a serious problem. That, that, that means that effectively, in people's decision making, inflation has become a really salient issue, and once that happens, that's what you, that's what we can't let, allow to happen. And you know, so that's why we worry that the longer we're at this, and the longer people are talking about inflation all day long, every day, um, you know, the, the more risk of something like that. But no, there's there's not much. It's a, it's more of a risk. It always has been more of a risk than anything else. By the way, I think it's becoming less salient. And people are, you know, we, we pick that up in conversations and I've seen some data too that show people are, you know, gradually, they're glad that inflation is coming down. People really don't like inflation. And as we see it coming down, that could also add a boost to economic activity. You, you look at the sentiment uh, surveys now and they're very, very low with three and a half percent unemployment and, you know, high wage increases nominally by historical standards. Why can that be? It has to be inflation, right? So. Uh, I think once inflation is seen to be coming down in, in coming months, 
even, you will also see a, a boost to sentiment, I hope. So that's what you're looking at most closely is consumer expectations. That's that's at the very heart is consumers and businesses that, that you know, are the essentially we believe that uh, expectations of future inflation are very and a very important part of the process of creating inflation. That, that's a as a sort of a bedrock belief uh, in one way or another. It, it has to be. It, we think it's important. Um, and uh, in this case, I would say the risk eight months ago or so longer term inflation expectations had moved up. We moved quite vigorously last year. Expectations are seem to be well anchored, including at the shorter end now, not just the longer end. So it's, you know, and that's, I think that's very reassuring. I think, you know, the markets have decided and the public has decided that inflation is going to come back down to 2% and it's just a matter of us following through. That's immeasurably helpful to the process of getting inflation down. The fact that people now do generally believe that it will come down, that'll be part of the process of getting it down and it's a very positive thing. Thank you, Chair Powell. Greg Rob from Market Watch. In the minutes of the December meeting, there was a, a couple sentences that struck people as important. When the committee said <coughs> participants talked about this unwarranted easing of financial conditions was a risk and it would make your life harder to bring inflation down. Are, I haven't seen heard you talk much about that today or in the statement. So I was wondering, has that concern eased among members or is that still something you're concerned about? Thank you. I would put it this way. It's something that we monitor carefully. Financial conditions didn't really change much from the December meeting to now. They mostly went sideways or up and down, but came out in roughly the same place. Um, it's important that the markets do reflect the tightening that we're putting in place. As we've, as we've discussed a couple of times here, there's a different difference in perspective by some market measures on how fast inflation will come down. We're just going to have to see. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to try to persuade people to have a different forecast, but our forecast is that it will take some time and some patience and that we'll need to keep rates higher for longer, but we'll, we'll see. Let's go to Brendan for the last question. Hi, Chair Powell. Uh, Brendan Peterson with Punchbowl News. Uh, I wanted to ask if the Fed takes into account at all the debt ceiling when it comes to quantitative tightening, given the fact that rapid or faster quantitative tightening could bring us closer, faster to that drop dead debt ceiling deadline. Could it play an effect as we get closer to that drop dead deadline this summer? What is that? I, look, I, it's very hard to think about all the different possible ramifications. And I, I think the answer is basically, I don't, I don't think there's likely to be any important interaction between the two because I believe Congress will wind up acting and as it, as it will and must in the end to raise the debt ceiling in a way that doesn't risk, you know, the progress we're making against inflation and the economy and the financial sector. I believe that that will happen. I believe it will happen. You know, it, we, we of course will monitor money market conditions carefully uh, as you know, as the process moves on, for example, the, the Treasury General account will shrink down and then it will grow back up. And we understand there'll be lots of flows between there and the overnight repo facility and, and reserves. We, we understand all that. We're watching it uh, carefully. We'll just be monitoring it. Thank you very much. All right, hold on. I got to change like a setting on here to make sure that you guys can hear me. I think you can. Let's do that. Hello. Hi. How you doing? <laughs> that was, uh, oh my God, that was worse than like going to the fucking library. Jesus. I oh, know. Fucking Powell. So basically what he said, guys, not a whole lot of bullish things there, which is very interesting how the market reacted. But we do have something to show you guys. Gabe, should we uh, should we pull up the screen that uh, that you shared with me? Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's go over this right here. So is this what I think it is? Uh, yes. Um, so this is Rita, full autonomous trading. Now we use Rita to go ahead and uh, show proof of concept and the things that we do and how we trade and uh, 
basically, yeah, we've talked about this not ever becoming a uh, public product because, well, with too much power comes too much responsibility. But she absolutely, she absolutely killed it starting uh, at 12 o'clock, 31,813. Currently, uh, just made uh, just shy of 3,000 at uh, 32,200. Uh, $32,985. So it's uh, up almost autonomous. 10% in a day, right? Autonomously. It's, a, it's an algorithm that's trading. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so basically what we do is uh, before we even bring anything out to market for you guys, right? So I go ahead. I have those um, aha moments, right? Mm -hmm. And then in those aha moments, I go ahead and I get it over to STB. And then Algo gets it on over to his lab. Um, and this is what we did with, uh, you know, the traffic lights. Um, again, we proved these things out. You don't get anything to market. Now, are you going to get a full autonomous trading bot? No, no, that's just a hell no. The thing is, is that if the autonomous trading bot can trade without conscious, right? All you guys have to do is follow the system. And you too could make money again. If if the system does not work, then our Rita would actually fail. Exactly. She would absolutely fail. So I just want you guys to know that before we go ahead and bring anything out to, to market, it's being tested and it's being tested rigorously, uh, thoroughly, you know, and I got to put my name on it. STB has got to put his name on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, yeah, just stay tuned. For those who are considering Lifetime, go ahead and get your discount today. Um, I I am at a point where, I'm going to be frank, um, you know, I value my own time. And, uh, mm -hmm. I value my contributions to the community. And there's, there's, no, there's no fucking way that uh, even $26.99 is fair market value for what we do. Not even close. It's not even close. I could go ahead and shop this to institutions and charge them and give them a license and they'll pay a license of what half a million dollars a month. Easy. Yep. We yep. can do this. I can absolutely do that. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, guys, it's uh, go ahead and secure the bag at 1348. Uh, get your lifetime. And uh, today's, we, today's the last day. Remember, we ran that pr uh, promotion for you guys. It's 50 percent off until the end of the day today. So if you want lifetime, you're going to have to get it by by basically. What is that? Midnight tonight? Yeah, yeah, by midnight tonight, that's just the way it's working. Um, we're counting on Ivan to go ahead and get the legalese taken care of for you guys so that we could have the uh, installment plan for those who, you know, much would we'll, we'll much rather go ahead instead of paying 1348 lump sum, mm -hmm. um, you go ahead and just defer that and use, use your capital or your dry powder to go ahead and compound and stack, right? So, yeah, you could go ahead and defer it. But um, you also have the opportunity to go ahead and just uh, never have to pay another lifetime again. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, as I said, I'm really, really proud of what you guys are accomplishing on an individual basis. Um, shout outs to the newly minted millionaires in this community. Mm -hmm. um, you guys are definitely a testament to uh, what, uh, you know, following systems is uh, and, 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 and just buying into the system 100 percent i'm getting a lot of messages like hey i'm gonna be the next millionaire and you know what i love that people are buying into it but the most important thing is is that when you buy into this please we're not gonna guide you guys to slaughter we're not doing that we tell you guys things for a reason we mm -hmm. tell you guys respect your portfolio we have to show you that we respect your portfolio and i think that uh showing our data with our bot here is just further further furthering the proof that we do respect your portfolio. Nothing comes to market publicly without us making sure that we can give our badge of approval. Yep. Now, you know, I trade, I back test this stuff for six months, but then I have to make sure that this shit is duplicatable and go ahead and say, all right, uh, how do we duplicate this? How do we get people uh, to do exactly what we're doing, knowing that they're eventually going to just fuck it up and willy nilly themselves. Right. So we got to, we, we do our best to make this as foolproof as possible. And again, a bot, no emotions, right? Zero room for error is proving out that our system works. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and get you some. Now, you don't have to commit to 1348. I'll gladly uh, take your monthlies for the next 10 years because I expect, you know, <laughs> you guys mm -hmm. are going to want it, right? Um, yeah. I'll gladly do that. But in that time, go ahead, take advantage of the 14-day uh, free trial, get you some traffic lights, 
become a believer, subscribe to the system, buy in, and hopefully, you know, we 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 get a, we get to a point where we could do interviews with, you know, in a perfect world, every single one of you, mm-hmm. right? But uh, as it stands right now, you know, you guys see, you, know, you lean on your peers and you root for your peers. There's none of that hate, toxic bullshit that that we see on Twitter. Mm-hmm. You guys root for your peers because, um, you know, it could be you one day. Just follow the system, right? Mm-hmm. And that's all I got for you. STB, anything to add there? No, I mean, again, guys, we've had we've been on an amazing journey with you guys. Again, um, everybody has access to the things um, that we're teaching you guys. We, we've given you this two week trial. We've made this super, super accessible to everybody. But nothing is going to change about your current situation unless you take action. That's what that's what like getting to a different point in your life is all about. You have to get up off your ass and take action. If you don't and you expect things to change, you are nothing better than the people on Twitter screaming and crying all day long about how somebody else is causing them to lose money when they could actually get up off the seat and do it for themselves. So team, again, get your two-week free trial. The link is at the top of the live chat. I've sent it in there for you guys a few times. Um, I can throw it in here for you guys again because we're probably going to be wrapping uh, wrapping some things up here. Um, I mean, you guys can see. Uh, how do you get half off lifetime? Oh, yeah, that's another thing we have to mention. So in order for you guys that are already existing members to get the 50% off lifetime and, and like transfer over to, um, what do you call it? Transfer over from monthly, monthly to lifetime. You're going to have to use the OG lifetime code, but also you need to reach out to Diana and she will help you transfer over. So everybody on the outside right now, if you want that deal, all you have to do is use the OG lifetime code. Um, if you want the two-week free trial, you don't have to do anything. You just come in as a monthly member. Um, I'm going to try and get that that millionaire member interview out for you guys within the next week. Um, I'd love to have have at least two of them uh, for you guys. So we do have – we're this is going to be the second one, and I want 10 this year. Yeah. We want Let's 10. do it. Let's do it, team. All right, guys. We're probably going to be wrapping some things up here. All you new lifetimers, all you new members, we're going to get you guys up to speed. Get ready for the masterclass this Sunday. We'll see what happens with Powell's reaction tomorrow. Other than that, guys, have a great rest of your day.